It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Houston Texans and the Baltimore Ravens. And it comes your way next. EA Sports coverage of the NFL on this fine afternoon brings us to historic Baltimore, Maryland and m and Bank Stadium. Today, we've got a fun little clash in the AFC as it'll be the Houston Texans taking on the Baltimore Ravens. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. But Charles, this Ravens team has been so successful in recent years, 10 or more wins in four of the last five seasons. What do they need to do to take that next step? Well, the way the Ravens have played for a lot of their franchise history, we know the defense is going to take care of business. They're going to keep you in every ball game. I think on offense, can they throw the ball more proficiently, especially out wide to the receivers, and make plays that way to continue to open up running lanes for a team that we know loves to move the ball along the ground? Meanwhile, for the Texans, things are changing rapidly in the Space City. They've got the new coach and D'Amico Ryans coming over from the Niners. They made two big splashes on draft night, but fixing the defense seems a priority. And remember the 2022 draft? They took a lot of guys on that side of the ball, so maybe we just need a little bit more seasoning with some of the talent that they've accumulated. So here's Kaimi Fairbairn to do the honors. And off we go from M&T Bank Stadium. A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. Here comes the Ravens on offense and a man in charge from Louisville, the former MVP, Lamar Jackson. And he remains the league's premier rushing threat and one of the biggest playmakers among quarterbacks. His goal each and every season, continue to expand his game as a passer and become well-rounded. All those highlight reel plays you see, they come off the fact that he can run it, throw it, and scares defenses every time he takes a snap. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Here's the fourth-year man, J.K. Dobbins. Their first play from scrimmage is a pickup of 13. Well, there you go. This offense off to a strong start this afternoon. Yeah, with a big run and a first down. That's putting what you practice into play. That's excellent execution to get things started. Throwing on first down, it's Jackson. This throw taken in by Isaiah Likely. We'll go down as a gain of six, and it'll be second down. I have to imagine many a defensive coordinators had a sleepless night trying to game plan ways to slow down Lamar Jackson. What do you think is the most effective way to try to do it? Well, you've got to be a little counterintuitive because normally you're sitting on the wide receiver one, aren't you? But with Lamar Jackson, I'd sit on the tight end. He loves to throw into the middle of the field, loves that position as his number one target. Take that away and hope you have a corner who can stand up man-to-man -man against his speed guy on the perimeter. Now it's Jackson. That's complete. It's Rashad Bateman. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Could we get a touchdown in this first half after all? It's first and ten. Now Jackson. That's into the hands of Crochet. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And they'll be left with a second and about a foot. To throw again is Jackson. A short throw caught by Andrews. And he will have a first down here as they get into field goal range as well down at the 17-yard line.
Jackson from the shotgun. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. It came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. To throw is Jackson. Incomplete. They haven't been able to stop them so far this series, but getting a nice little stand from their defense now. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Again, Jackson. He's going to be sacked back at the 23-yard line. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. So this defense, they gave up some yards on this drive, but bottom line, they came up with a sack when it mattered. And we know that every down counts, but let's be honest about it. People focus on third down as a real key down in any drive, any situation, and they took full advantage Justin of third down Tucker there and made a play. A 40-yard attempt. Tucker's kick is good. And we have action on the scoreboard just before halftime. It's 3-0. So a pretty good opening drive. That'll make the home fans somewhat happy. They wanted six, but they got three in the early lead. And they should be happy. The guys look good getting down the field. That's got to give them a little bit of hope that good things are in store here today for them. Time for one play on offense. Seven seconds to go in the half as the kick is away. Tank Dell now to return it. And good coverage there on special teams as he'll get him down shy of the 20. So here are the Texans now with a fresh face at quarterback. The second overall pick from Ohio State, C.J. Stroud. In only two seasons, Stroud showed all he needed to at Ohio State. All-American, Heisman finalist, program records galore. He looked every bit like the number one overall pick. He went number two, but Houston is thrilled to have him. All that remains is to snap this once, and that'll do it for the first half of play. So we've reached halftime. All we have to show for the first half, a lone field goal. 3-0 our score. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much, and welcome in everyone to our downtown Orlando studios in this EA Sports Halftime Report. This one's been all about the defense, just a lone field goal in that first half. And as a result, not too much available in terms of highlights, but that's okay. We've got a full half to go. And to bring it your way, let's get back out to Brandon and Charles. All right, coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. Just one field goal in a tightly played first half as we resume action here in quarter number three. This fielded right at the goal line. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. So now we get set to see Houston for their second drive of the ball game. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively, virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, they've been playing pretty well. They've kept them around in this game. 
Now they've got some time. The running game struggled in the first half. Opposition knows how to focus on defending the pass here. They've got to re-energize that ground game and maybe open things up for a comeback here in this half. He was held without a catch in the first half, but he's got one here, and he also picks up a first down. That's a good start to the ball game. Maybe a little bit of a tone setter offensively. They come out throwing right away, and it's an early completion and a quick first down. A man coming off a great rookie year. It's Damian Pierce. And the defense closes quickly there. He'll get maybe a yard to the 33. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secured before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Baltimore. They'll come up now, second and nine. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point, just a field goal separating these two teams. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. On the move past the 40. What a time to come up with a play like that. They're now in field goal range. But the opportunity is also there to try and win the game outright. All three timeouts still at their disposal. Here's first and ten now. Now Stroud. And this is caught. Touchdown. And they've taken the lead here in the final minute. What an outstanding drive right there to take the lead. And also, Charles didn't leave their opposition with a whole lot of time on the clock. Yeah, I like the way that you're viewing this because they did a tremendous job to put themselves in a position to win, but they can't celebrate just yet. They've got to clamp down on any big plays and force them to use up those timeouts without making any headway. Kaimi Fairbairn on for the extra point. And this is up and good to make it 7-3. Just a four-play drive that time. And the result, a Houston touchdown. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Jackson and the Ravens, here they come. Down 7-3, to three, 25 seconds remaining. They need a touchdown. A field goal is worthless now as they come up on first and 10. Let's do this, man. Jackson to throw. He's got a man complete. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts as they get it with just 19 seconds left on the clock. Two timeouts still in their back pocket. It's first and 10. Throwing, Jackson. That one complete to Prochet. He's got room to roam. The Ravens gonna use the second of their timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. They'll come up first and ten here. Jackson. And he's left with no option here but to throw it away. 
And we know that this crowd really wants to explode. What a win this would be. They had a shot at the end zone right there, and it fell incomplete. 12 yards between them and the end zone. Second and 10. Now Jackson. And that will be incomplete. Four ticks left here on the clock. And a great game comes down to this. Time for one play, and they've got to get it in the end zone. And I want every cover guy I've got in the game on defense, every extra defensive back who can make a play on the football. So whether it's nickel, dime, quarter, whatever you want to call it, I want five, six, seven guys back there. One last shot for Jackson. And he's across for the touchdown, and it's likely the game winner here in the closing stages. Charles, that drive was perfect. Methodical, executed so well, and they grabbed that lead with almost no time left for a last gas from the other side. No way you could have drawn up a better final drive because not only did they keep their eyes on the end zone, they made sure they bled the clock out as well and denied their opponent a chance to respond. That's just terrific situational football to end this one. Now an important extra point here to stretch this lead to a field goal. He's got it, and this is indeed up to a three-point lead. So that drive spanned five plays, and it ends with what most likely will be the game-winning touchdown. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. Well, this one, partner, was fun down to the very end. They got the points late, right before the whistle. Then the ensuing kickoff. They were hoping for magic on the other side, but couldn't get that spark. Fun if you won, <laughs> and fun for us, because we got to watch it and call it. That magic that you were talking about didn't occur at the end, but what a game all the way through.